It gives me great pleasure now to bring Caroline Wright on. We're a bit back to front. Caroline should be on before uh, Rose, uh, but the technology <laughs> is working brilliantly now. So uh, I'll hand over to you and be quiet. Thank you very much, Caroline Wright, Director General of Visa. Thank you ever so much, Mark. And thank you so much, Rose. It was really great to, to hear from you and see the research you've done. I will be very quick because I know uh, we need to make up time. And also I have the challenges of two children now having jumped onto a live lesson with bandwidth in my own house. So I'll be very quick, but it's wonderful to be here. Massive congratulations to Mark for keeping us going through a few issues. I think it's fantastic. I've been watching the chat and some of the conversations about global ed tech and the challenges we're all facing. It's, it's really helpful to have today as a chance to discuss that together. Um, Visa, for those of you who don't know who we are and what we do, we're the, the British Trade Association for the education companies, many of which you'll be hearing from today, some fantastic organisations. Um, Visa's role is obviously to help those companies and to help raise the quality of education with the provision of really high quality educational resources. And the key way we do that is by quality assuring the British companies we work with um, who sign up to a code of conduct and we check their financials and so on so that teachers know that they're working with quality companies. So that's who we are. During the last year, we have been so impressed to see how schools have adapted to all the challenges you've faced and actually the UK edtech sector have really stepped up to try and support schools. They provided £36 million of free edtech resources in just the three months alone from that March to June period of initial school closures. And I think even more importantly than that, I think we're, we're having a global conversation now and lots of the edtech companies work across the world. So they were working with some of the first schools that went into school closure and then were able to help as different parts of the world experience challenges to share their learnings. And I think that's for me is what's really important about opportunities and conferences like today. Um, I think we've made, nothing is good about a pandemic, but I think we have made lots of steps forward in terms of ed tech and the use in schools. And I think it's really important to make sure we try to avoid that fallback and some of the even bigger disparities that we're all becoming even more aware of um, between sort of haves and have nots and making sure that all learners have got the opportunity to access the resources um, that are available to make sure that they have access to that learning. Um, I think obviously I was going to reference Rose's report anyway, but you've heard about that and do take a look as that that comes out. It's going to be a fantastic piece of work. The um, British Parliament's all party parliamentary group for EdTech are also going to be shortly publishing a report that looks um, at some of the challenges faced in the UK schools. And I'd also really, um, I'd, I'll put the link in the chat, but um, Professor Tim Unwin, along with the Foreign and Commonwealth Development Office and the EdTech Hub there, have done a really important piece of work on um, education for the most marginalised post COVID-19, which looks at um, disadvantaged communities around the world and has some advice for governments um, and decision makers on how they can try and help make sure that some of our most needy learners don't lose out even more. I think from my personal perspective, I think three key things have really come to the front of mind for me as we move forward in terms of EdTech. I think it's the infrastructure challenge, the connectivity, um, I'm experiencing myself, <laughs> uh, devices, and also sort of access to, to data and making sure that some disadvantaged pupils aren't cut off from that world of learning that's available online because of challenges of affordability of data. I think there's the content and it's a continued need for the creation and curation of really high quality curriculum resources. We have some fantastic companies out there and places to go. So I think it's making sure that we carry on the conversation between educate, ed educators and um, publishers to make sure that that's available in the right format and a blended online, offline, whatever's needed to help learners. And I think most importantly, it's that focus on continued teacher CPD. We have seen obviously a lot of the people on this call, um, you know, you've understood and you're engaging in ed tech already but for some teachers and some um, schools that's been a massive 
jump forward they've had to take how do and they have and they've done amazingly well but how do we support embed some of those practices and and give teachers the time to be able to develop their skills over the longer term so that for me is really important but finally uh, i said i'd be quick do enjoy the conference. I mean, I've taken a look and I'm looking forward to hearing from some of our other speakers. Uh, Rose, um, you've heard from, but along with Rose, Bucky Youssef, who I'm honoured to sort of share working with Rose and Bucky as part of the Department for Education in the England's um, EdTech Leadership Group. And you've got some amazing speakers from some of the fantastic visa companies I've mentioned. You've got two simple tutes, Net Support Frog, iris amazon web services so they're all amazing companies and i'm really looking forward to enjoying the rest of the conference thanks very much thanks mark